Welcome to Cunningham Piano, I'm Hugh Sung. In this video, we're going to explore the secrets of the piano action. Our exploration of the secrets of the piano action actually begins here in a coffee shop just down the street from our piano restoration facility. They happen to have this old machine. This is an old fashioned typewriter. A lot of people think that playing the piano is like typing on a typewriter. You push a key, you get a note. Well, the problem is that on a typewriter, you push a key, you get the same letter the same way every single time. The other problem is I can only go so fast. It's very hard to repeat because when I repeat that mechanism, it has to come all the way back and then re be repressed the same way. And so I'm limited as to both the speed and also the fact that I can't change the way that letter looks. On a piano, I can do both of those things. I can make every note, every single note, sound so different in so many ways. And I can also repeat that note really, really fast, also in a number of different ways. So let's go back to the factory and explore how that all works. On the surface, a piano and a typewriter can seem very similar. You press a key, you get a note. What makes the piano action so remarkable is its ability to give every one of these keys a nearly infinite range of volume, texture, and color. So for a very simple example, I can play some notes very long and very soft. I can play some other notes, maybe a little bit faster and a little bit louder. and still other notes even louder than that. Put it all together and you have an incredible musical tapestry. And as I mentioned, another thing that sets the piano action apart from the typewriters is its ability to repeat notes very, very quickly and with a remarkable degree of control. As you can see, the key stick is a lot longer and every key stick, generally speaking, every key from the highest to the lowest is going to be the same length and every key works like a simple seesaw on the single fulcrum point. You can see the hole over here. Now this isn't the hammer. This is what we call the back check. The action is actually activated by this little screw over here, which is called a capstan. So let's take a deeper look into the action and how this all works. A simple seesaw that activates a really complex set of motions in what we call the actual action itself. This isn't the action. This only activates the action. So now let's see how this key stick actually operates on what we call a key frame. So this middle hole over here will go into the center balance rail. That's kind of the seesaw part, what we call the fulcrum point. Slides into here, and there's actually a hole underneath the front of this key which goes into this front key rail. Now, this capstan, remember we talked about this for a second, this is what's gonna actually activate the action and get the key whipped into motion. It's almost kind of like a catapult that throws the, the hammer to strike the string in a, a number of different ways. But that's basically it. So we push the key down, this capstan is gonna activate the action and that'll help it to return to its position as well after the action is completed. Now, one way to think of the piano action is that it's a form of biomechanical amplification. Yeah, I know, I'm watching way too many superhero movies. But what's really interesting is that this little seesaw, I, I don't have that much play with the key. At most, anywhere between 3 eighths to maybe half an inch of play from the top of the key action to the bottom. That's not a lot of room to exert force. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna do a little experiment. I'm gonna demonstrate the force of the key stick and the little seesaw by itself using a quarter. And then we're gonna launch it off of the capstan 
which is where it would be connected to the piano action. And then we're going to add the actual piano action itself on top of the key and to see how that action relaunches the same quarter. Okay, so I've added an extra key with it on this end just to keep this end down. All right, let's launch our quarter. Ready? Here we go. Three, two, one. Not getting very much height. There's not a lot of distance to travel with this key stick from the top of the stroke to the bottom. So there's not a lot of force being applied to that capstan to launch the quarter. Now let's see what happens when we add the piano action stack on top of the key. All right, this time I have my full biomechanical amplification system installed on top of this key. I, I mean, <laughs> this is the piano action. Let's do the same experiment. Let's put the quarter on top of the hammer this time. All right, now let's see what happens when I push the key down. Three, two, one. Whoa! Sorry, guys. You know, one of the best things about this biomechanical amplification system is that it doesn't require a bite from a radioactive spider or an extra dose of gamma radiation. It's incredible how much more power I get with just about a less than half an inch of play from the top to the bottom of the keystroke. Now, this not only amplifies the power, but the full range of touch. So if I want it to be delicate instead of launching the quarter and breaking another light, I can be just as gentle with that stroke too. So again, from the most delicate motion to the most powerful, this amplifies the full range of my touch with just a minimum of effort. Okay, for this next part, I'm gonna to defer to one of the masters of action here. This is Jay working in our factory. Jay, if you don't mind, give us a, a blow by blow in terms of what happens when we push that key down. Sure, no problem. Okay, so here's what we generally uh, would either refer to as a top action or the action stack. Um, based on the explanation that Hugh gave you earlier, okay, when you press the key down, the cap sign on the back of the key comes up, which basically catches this felt over here at the bottom of the weapon or repetition, which in turn pushes the hammer, triggers a lot of mechanisms inside the repetition, and it pushes the hammer up towards the string. Now. The, la the very last motion that we have is when this knuckle over here hits this piece of felt over here, okay, called the let off uh, button, okay, and what basically that does is it cuts off the mechanism right before the hammer hits the string, okay, so that at the very last moment there is no mechanical pressure going upwards, it is literally just inertia of the hammer going up and hitting the string. So one of the things I wanted to explain why this let off mechanism is so important is because we want to be able to control the hammer to do one very special thing and that is to repeat really, really quickly. Now on a typewriter, if I wanted to press the same key really fast, I have to bring that mechanism all the way back to its starting point and then repress it. What this let off mechanism actually enables me to do, it resets the hammer much closer to the string. So when I need another fast repeated attack, the hammer is much closer to reattack the string and give me the control that I need. That is one of the most complex touch actions that you can do thanks to the development of the whipping technology. Now there's one more really important aspect of the piano action from the key point of view. Again, this is the front where I push down the key. This is the center rail bushing, that little hole, which acts as a seesaw fulcrum point. This is the capstan, which activates the action, which throws the hammers up to the string. Now the very back of this is also really, really important. This is the key and felt which will go up and activate something called an underlever mechanism. Sounds pretty fancy. The underlever mechanism is what actually raises a piece of wood and felt called a damper. That damper normally sits on top of each set of strings assigned to each hammer. When I push the key down, this key and felt activates the underlever mechanism, which lifts basically the damper and wooden and felt piece of block. And then the string is now free to vibrate. When I let go of the key, the key felt comes back down. The underlever mechanism lets the damper drop down and stops the string. So I, by holding the key down, I can control how long the string vibrates. And by how fast or how slow I release the key, I can also control the speed at which that damper stops the string, either really quickly or 
really gradually. Okay. So here what we have is uh, what we normally call either the back action or the damper action. Okay, um, as you mentioned before, uh, the back of the key has the felt called the key end felt, okay? And when the key is depressed, that back felt goes up, which in turn pushes these little levers up. These are called the under levers, okay? Which in turn, if you want to come up here, raise the damper whenever the key is depressed. On a slightly tangential note, digital piano manufacturers will often tout the fact that they feature weighted keys. What are weighted keys and why are they so important? Well, in those instances, digital piano manufacturers are trying to emulate the touch and feel of acoustic pianos. On acoustic pianos, you have strings of different lengths that the hammers are hitting. The longer the string, the lower the note sounds. The shorter the string, the higher the note sounds. Now, the longer strings have more mass and need more mass and energy in order to make them vibrate and sound properly. Therefore, you're going to have hammers that are larger and key sticks that are heavier for the longer strings, the lowest sounding notes. In fact, the key sticks will have additional weights actually added onto them to give them enough mass and velocity. As you move up to the shorter strings and the higher sounding notes, the hammers get smaller and the key sticks get lighter. So that's what they're talking about, that gradation from heavy to light, from the lowest to the highest sounding notes. You'll feel that gradual change of weight, touch, and responsiveness uh, relative to the length of the string and the sound of the pitch. You know, the more I learn about pianos, the more amazed I am at this incredible merger of science, mechanical engineering, physics, and art. This is an instrument that gives musicians true three-dimensional control of sound. What an incredible expression of science and art merged together. Well, thanks so much for watching. I hope you found this helpful. Special thanks to Jay Diaz for his help in helping me understanding the keyboard mechanism more clearly. And of course, special thanks to our entire team of craftsmen here at Cunningham Piano's Restoration Facility. For Cunningham Piano, I'm Hugh Sung. Be sure to subscribe so that we can let you know whenever we have new videos. And I'll see you next time.